Welcome to End Times Matrix News. Continuing with Anthony Patch, this is uh, show two for this uh, uh, this get together that we're having today. Uh, this section of the show is called the Return of the Titans: Days of Noah, and we're going to start off with Chris. She has a another video presentation. Um, this is uh, fascinating stuff that's going on right now uh, as we speak today. Things related to today. Um, we like to stay right on top of every all of the current events as they relate to the end times and um, and watching the CERN events. So uh, um, when she's ready, we'll go ahead and click on and highlight her show. Her. I'm ready. All right, we got it. Tunnel vision going into the rabbit hole. Good. All right, and all right. so we can. See the um, the presentation here. We're going to start it off talking about Ceres, the dwarf planet. Um, and Tim, do you want to start off on talking about the article that you sent me in the SLU that you're watching with Ceres? Well, I became really interested in Ceres uh, because I I like to observe the the. Uh, scientific community, and they, and I also was very interested in uh, things related to Saturn. And when we looked at all the satellites of Saturn, we saw that all the names of the satellites of Saturn uh, are deities' names. That uh, when they would run out of Roman deities, they would go to Greek deities. When they ran out of that, they go to Norse deities. They just kept, you know, stringing these things out as many as they could find. They found a god to name them. So it just seemed like the, there was this concentric concentration of deities. And we know NASA and all these space agencies always have n certain names for the Jupiter or just Saturn rockets or, you know, uh, you look at the different rockets for the uh, Apollo, what is it? Apollo, Apollo. Rocco, rockets. And then we look at the, what's, what's the SpaceX now? we got the SpaceX and the Phoenix booster rockets or the Phoenix rockets that they do. Uh, so they they're just they they this Freemason Nazi uh, Saturn worshiping occult agenda of, of science uh, these good scientists that don't have any spiritual beliefs sure they don't um, but uh, Ceres is this dwarf planet and I just got fascinated with it because I found out that JPL um, you know a Jack Parsons Laboratory better known as the Jet Propulsion Laboratory but really Jack Parsons Laboratory. Uh, it is. <laughs> it was sending the Dawn probe, uh, Dawn of a New Age, get it, <laughs> to, to Ceres. Uh, and, and you know, what's neat about it is today, as of this reporting, today is March 6th. So you have the three sixes, and, and the Jack Parsons Laboratory Dawn mission to Ceres is now in orbit as of 666. Um, so, here we go again. <laughs> and, and for those who may not know who Jack Parsons is, he was an illuminist going back to, in Hollywood, in the Hollywood Hills, Malibu. Um, he was tied in with um, the formation of the illuminist as we know them today in our modern society. Quite the occultist. And he was tied in with Hollywood bigwigs as well. Yeah, Jack Parsons was buddy buddy with uh, L. Ron Hubbard, and they were the disciples of Aleister Crowley. Right. So uh, we have Scientology with L. Ron Hubbard, and we got, uh, you know, uh, Jack Parsons' claim to fame was that he his rocket fuel was what got him on uh, contracts with the government and um, his JPL became the only private recipient at that time of government contracts for some reason and um, it's uh, JPL is one of those real injury uh, they this this dawn um, this dawn probe has an ion propulsion system very fascinating uh, to allow it to travel out this far, uh, and it was in uh, what was the what was the name of it? Europa? Were they in the orbit of Europa and then went to um, Ceres? It was uh, designed to go into multiple orbits, 
because of the just the way that the ion propulsion unit operates it was to allow instead of the traditional way where you just shoot a rocket at one object and that's it this one could redirect and and uh, continue in multiple directions over time so it allowed it to go into orbit around several objects and they just designed it was shot about uh, it was launched about seven years ago um, or in 2007 or 2008 I can't remember which one but uh, the point is it entered orbit of Ceres on 666 <laughs> and uh, if you know Ceres it's uh, a dwarf planet outside of Saturn and we have our solar event or our solar eclipse coming up on 320 it's convenient timing and then of course it's going to be uh, orbiting around Ceres for the next year to year and a half as they say and that means that it's going to be here for all our big CERN power-ups and so any of us who like to talk about Saturn uh, the plasma conduit, so we haven't really talked about that yet. Uh, and Saturn and uh, portals, uh, the movie Interstellar and wormholes and portals to Saturn, uh, the abyss, the pit, all these fun things are all connected to this topic possibly. And so that's my series um, input for this show. And a, and a footnote are the two headlights, as I call them, that are illuminating on the surface of Ceres. I think Chris might have that clip when she gets back. Uh, I yeah, did send. I did send her that photo. It is a. It's a nice uh, series uh, photo back in front or both sides of series, and it does have the two. I think they call them cryo uh, volcanic uh, possibility of a, like uh, like a, what do you want to say ice yeah. volcanoes or something. Right, an eruption. So what's the big deal with Ceres? Why are they going there? Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the fifty million dollar question. Why are we orbit? It's to look at a dwarf star up close for the first time, is what they're saying. <laughs> we also have another dwarf star that's in the conspiracy realm that uh, is supposed to be drifting around out there somewhere. Right. <laughs> so well, dwarf I star. Dwarf stars are interesting all of a sudden. Why are they calling it a dwarf planet or a dwarf star and not a moon? That's that's really, yeah, why? Is it too big for a satellite? Um, well, does it, does it orbit Saturn? Well, I thought, well, I thought we had Chris there for a second. Um, I'm here. I'm, I was just waiting on you guys to... Oh, okay. Yeah, well... Uh, that, I sent an article that came from JPL today. Uh, I didn't know if you want to pull that up, or did you have that double? You can see my presentation, right? I was going to continue when you oh, were ready. Yeah. Go, well, go ahead then. We'll just let you go. Okay. Um, well, one other thing I wanted to say where you were talking about Europa, and Europa is also a sister of Cadmus, and uh, she was actually taken by Zeus, and uh, they had a child, but that's another story. But Europa is a moon of Saturn. Saturn is known to some as a dwarf planet, and the way that they're uh, that the dwarf planets are very interesting. But uh, Europa has volcanoes and oceans, mm -hmm. and uh, if you see the Mithra uh, uh, stones, and they were in many of the caves and in the Jupiter temples, and you can see Europa stabbing uh, the bull with the seven stars on her cape. That's who that is, and she has the funny little Smurf, Smurf-looking hat. Theory <laughs> uh, is uh, is the female <laughs> aspect of uh, Saturn. Okay. Saturn has a male and a female aspect. That's why I said too that some people see Saturn as a dwarf uh, planet too. But uh, Ceres is also Sybil and Dementor. You can see her here with this uh, sickle like. Saturn. Uh, she's also the god of time, um, fertility of grain, finances, and this ties into the Kamiki year. This is a coin with her on the front and uh, Saturn on the back with with the uh, with the trident. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that Poseidon carries the trident, but Saturn is also uh, Neptune. He represents Neptune also. Uh, it took me a long time to understand that, but 
he does. Uh, so she, you know, we're in the Smita year, and she's the goddess of finances, agriculture. This ties into the maize and the crops and the harvest with the wheat and the tares. Uh, Sybil has, uh, here she is here, um, she has, she always has the chariot with the two lions, and this is representative of the sun. And she has a key, uh, and so does Janice. So Sybil has one key, and Janice has the other key. And Janice is Saturn's brother with, he has three faces, but you normally just see two. And he is the god of, of doors, so he can go in different directions. And um, so anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> My dog kind of got out of control. But um, <laughs> I, I'm okay. I'm sorry, too. <laughs> um, so anyway, continuing on with this, with the series, I'm trying to find a place to go where it's quiet. I'm so sorry about that. Um, so if you see her standing on a lion with minis, he's the black uh, god of the dead. It's part of that process, too, during a time she stands on the lion with uh, uh, Nergil on the other side. And these are like, you know, they're gods of the dead. And here's another picture of her. All over the world, the gods have this, like, two things in their hands, usually a snake. And uh, that's another picture of her with the grains and the snakes in her hands. Snake worship is all over the world, so, in most, most uh, religions. And here is, uh, she has this in her hand. This is like a key, or kind of like the Vaji, the lightning bolt here. And here she has the Saturn crescent on her head, just like uh, Hermes does on his uh, symbol. This is a little notation that I found about the fruits of the seasons offered to the gods of the farm and the field. And uh, Ceres received the first corn, Dionysus the first grapes. Uh, so did Saturn, so he represents Saturn and Athena, that uh, the first olives. So there's like these festivals that they have, and uh, they're not good festivals, you know. They're, you would have to look more into that. But all these gods of the dead, they're like, uh, they, they seem all nice when you look at their statues and you look at the Egyptian artifacts and all these things, but the real story behind them we won't get into is not, not very good. Here's another statue of her. It's a weird one, but this is, see this thing on her head? Uh, this is um, the same thing that uh, Seraphis and uh, Jupiter, you can look at the Jupiter statues of Zeus, and he has the same thing on his, on his head. And she's here showing with uh, different faces, I guess like four faces, and she represents Saturn. And here she is with her um, in a museum with the two lions. This is Sybil. And she represents different goddesses, but uh, are the, in different languages. And here she is on a lion here. But this ties into the Shemitah year. Uh, this is another calendar here with the 49 years that ends in uh, 2015. And um, this is the black sackcloth sun that we're going to have on March the 20th. And then we have these two. This is the full moon of Sukkot. Mm -hmm. But um, those are all the pictures that I really have. This is the most interesting one that I, that I, that I have here. But, um, but she does represent both uh, Saturn and she has a key. He's... Saturn uh, is in the abyss. He's he is in the nether world. So that's why Saturn is in the position it's in, and it is in the nether world, and it has those rings around it that some uh, researchers say that they're crystals or whatever. But um, but that's all I have there, and I'll show Tim's other information when he's ready. But 
did you want to comment on any of these things or anything, Tim or Anthony? I'll let Anthony. You know. Just real quick, the wheat and the tares. You're, you've got the sickle and you've got the, the harvest going on with Ceres there, or Demeter. Um, obviously, the wheat and the tares relates to the rapture. Yeah. And so does Ceres. I mean, I guess Ceres is a planet that's coming into our solar system. And it's not supposed to, from what I understand. And it's a dwarf planet. And they're... Um, what the dwarf planets were made of, and they're they're very interesting uh, so, planets. So that's why they call Ceres a planet because it's not an orbiting moon around Saturn or Jupiter. Yeah, because it's a dwarf uh, planet. All these dwarf planets, just you know, you start reading about all these different dwarf planets that's come up recently. I think Aries is another one. Um, but uh, I, I wish I had more time to work on this because Mercury uh, rules over Mars, and I think uh, Ceres is like a destroyer type uh, planet in that aspect in mythology. So I didn't have a chance to look all up that, or the fact that um, with this harvest and the corn with the corn maze and I know that Round Saturn's Eye did a video on uh, the the corn maze and how our DNA is connected to corn and it was quite an interesting I wish I had that video too Tim just kinda was telling me about this this morning so I didn't have a lot of time to put it together but we have time to do a, another show next time sure. and, yeah, and we, add all we can always add on stuff, you know. They uh, why it was interesting is that it's a breaking story today with the uh, dawn circling series, and then we have it connected to the wheat and the tares. We have it connected to a possible. Uh, there's all kinds of. We know we have a Saturn worshiping group of elite, um, and uh, again, we know the Lucifer Telescope is a is a infrared telescope that looks for these dwarf stars. That's one of their uh, objects that they look for is these dwarfs drifting out there that don't put off light, but they put off this infrared uh, heat signature that they're there. And these, this is part of what the, the Vatican is always out there looking at these things. So my, my mind jumps to, okay, well, if we're looking at a connection between the Saturn and breaking out of the abyss uh, and connecting with the plasma conduit to to the CERN event or whatever it is, is uh, this uh, you know this satellite a signaling uh, you know end of a wormhole kind of a thing to send signals and communicate? I don't know. But the point what? is, why do they have it out there? <laughs> right. Let, let me do my leap then. Okay. Um, dwarf stars oftentimes are neutron stars. Neutron stars form from strangelets. Oh, when, wow. str when strangelets, we discussed this about the Earth being converted, terraform. If the strangelets go to the core of the Earth, then ostensibly what they do is they attract other atoms to themselves, thus converting the entire planet into a neutron star. And a neutron star does not give off any light because of its um, gravitational attraction, its density, much like a black hole doesn't give off light. So if, in fact, Ceres, and I'll have to dig into this, because I've been so distracted with other things, um, I haven't followed Ceres, but if, in fact, it is a neutron star and it is comprised of strangelets, then my thinking is, will Ceres move closer to Saturn and if it does move closer to Saturn will it provide the ability to facilitate the connection between Earth and Saturn again at the southern pole of Saturn with the plas plasma conduit. Wow that's really interesting. <laughs> yeah we'll have to look more into that but also I forgot to say that her her name is also Rhea R H E A. I mean, that's, uh, and she's also connected to the two ladies. She's, 
she's one of the two ladies of the upper and lower Egypt too. So um, the Wadget, the snake, she's the one that represents the snake. So well, let's um, let's the three of us try to look at the path, the orbital pathway or the directional pathway of Ceres, and see where it is headed. Um, maybe Stellarium or one of those software programs will tell us or someone will put a video out that will tell us where it is moving. If it's moving into the solar, into our solar system, um, obviously there's a path, a flight path, and we can tell, you know, what's going on in terms of its relationship to Saturn. Yeah, I have some videos showing it coming into our solar system. I, I can send them to you. Okay. Then that, would, that would give us the timing as to the closest contact between the best alignment between the bodies, the objects, and right, exactly. Yeah. And these yeah. these uh, gods uh, from the abyss, like uh, Saturn, uh, these represent the Titans. Uh, and then, in, you know, like in the days of Noah, uh, it'll be today. And so. If it's going to be like the days of Noah and the abyss is going to open, that means it's going to be the return of the Titans. And uh, so that's part of the the end times uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have the neutron star that we have to check on that and what that means. Good. Did you want me to go ahead and go into your story, uh, your robot story? Sure, absolutely. There's another event that's occurring today in the pop culture that's connected with uh, the artificial intelligence of the, 20, <laughs> of the 2048. Uh, this is from the directors of District 9, okay, this is, which was an a alien kind of uh, UFO hovering over a city kind of a thing, and Elysium, which is the uh, Plato's Republic, uh, where the elites uh, live uh, there up on Mount Olympus, looking down upon the peasants of Earth. Uh, this is uh, that's what Elysium is. Uh, this chappy thing here is the Terminator a movie. Uh, this is a military robot that is captured and uh, rewired and becomes uh, AI and learns for as a child. So you, here you have Mama, Papa, Chappie. And uh, wow. looks like I you got a W there. <laughs> I have the little video to show in the, in the website on this, but okay. I just wanted to comment and say this Elysium is a place uh, in mythology, mm -hmm. uh, Jupiter allowed, uh, I guess, himself, which is his father, to be inside of this other area of, of the bottomless pit, which is called the Elysium. It is an area of one of the levels of hell. Yes, you see Elysium Fields portrayed in uh, Gladiator with Russell Crowe, um, if you want to see that. Elysium is also, usually you get the inner Elysium based on drop, dying in a valiant way in battle. Uh, so you go to Elysium Fields. Uh, that's one of the other side things. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so go ahead with the chappy stuff here. We got such a cute little AI that's going to terminate us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so you here's the uh, the video on that. If you want to see okay. it real quick. Yeah. Sure, uh, running for the folks. Uh, you know, this is their video, and we're not modifying it. So. That's the plot. I thought that sounded really interesting, the idea of a sentient rope. That's not the one I wanted to show. I'm so sorry. Okay. The deployment of the planet's first robotic police units became the focus of the world in 2016. <laughs> Vincent Moore is a former soldier. Problem with artificial intelligence is way too unpredictable. The scout's creator, Dion Wilson, sees a rich future. What interests me is a machine that can think and feel. I have a robot that is operated by a thinking human being. We don't want this. It's expensive, it's big, and it's ugly. The scouts are a huge success. Stop worrying about these pet projects. I feel good. This is a new kind of life for me. 
of a new step in evolution. You are Jeffy. Jeffy. It's like a child. It has to learn. Anything you want to do in your life, you can do. Write poetry, have original ideas. Jimmy wants to paint. Wow. What in the name of the world? You know what about a big problem for me? A thinking robot could be the end of mankind. Destroy that robot. Burn it to ash. There's something of great danger headed our way now. I don't want to die. I want to live. If you want to survive, Jack. You must fight. They have downtown. The police have begun shutting down. We have my business. You think you're real? You don't get away with this. Be special. I am consciousness. I am alive. I am Jeppy. So you got the famous quote of "I think, therefore I am." <laughs> I am consciousness. Yes, I am alive. I think, therefore I am. Self awareness. Realize I will. It's a. They like to promote sympathy for the devil is the term that I, I, I term is to they try to make it anthropomorphic in the sense that they try to take something that's not human and make it seem human so mm -hmm. that you attribute a, a childlike and this is how they've always manipulated us is anything you see on TV today they, they hold a child up in front of them when they're arguing for something and everybody goes oh it's a child and then they drop their guard. Same thing with a Terminator robot. <laughs> right. Um, Sigourney Weaver, she says, burn it to ash. That's presupposing that it is comprised of carbon and phosphorus. And interesting that you have focused, Chris, on phosphorus lately. And that when you burn phosphorus, it turns to an ash. It is a light in its in its um, atomic form phosphorus is light and she's commanding them to burn a robot to ash but it's comprised of metal and plastic therefore it will not turn to ash wow that's interesting you know the mark of the beast has a lot to do with ash and um and the bull, you know, they mix the bull's uh, blood, and um, you see the Catholic priests do the tall cross on people's head with the ash, and uh, and that's the uh, another resemblance of of the mark of the beast that they use. And I know Tim was talking about the ash being let out in the chemtrails, and wondering how that had something to do with with CERN because we know that chemtrails have a lot to do with what they're doing in, sure. uh, in CERN too. So, And the ashes are really interesting just like the, uh, the ashes from when the Jews were killed in the Holocaust. Uh, there is, uh, there's possibly a connection with their DNA and why they wanted to, uh, to do this. Reduce so. them to ash. Plus, you look at Ash Wednesday in the Catholic religion and the, the cross on the forehead using ash. Um, also, what I take from this is not just the ash, presupposing that it's made of carbon as we are, or and phosphorus. We're comprised of a uh, hundred different elements, but they're focusing on consciousness as well. And when we talk about artificial intelligence. There's the building of the machinery. There's the building of the computer, and that's all well and good. But as philosophers of 
old have always tried to pin down and define what is consciousness. And that's been the struggle in philosophy for as long as man has been around. How do you define? How do you put your finger on it? From a physics standpoint, how do you create consciousness? That is the elemental question in artificial intelligence. When we get into talking about whether or not a computer is sentient, if it's self-aware, if it recognizes itself in the mirror, does it have a sense of its mortality or immortality? That's being sentient, but is that consciousness? And we can go into a long philosophical discussion, but the point is, to me at least, to achieve a sentient status as a computer, whether it's Chappie or anybody else, you have to have a soul, or you have to have a spirit, however you want to define it. If we are talking about or opening a portal and these host bodies being receptacles for these spirits, be they the artificially constructed host bodies that we talked about in the previous video a little bit ago today, or human bodies that are being prepared through chemtrails or other mechanisms, again for the reception of spirits into humans that are alive today and will be alive at the time of the portal being open. Then you have the ability to say, well, those bodies now have a consciousness to them and they are sentient. If we're talking about building an artificially constructed beast and that beast being controlled by a artificially intelligent quantum computer, the 2048, now we have to impart upon that beast a spirit or a soul or a consciousness as well. Hmm. Yeah, that's um, just for people's. Uh, this Chappie thing was released today. Uh, same same dynamic here with the 666 or the three sixes as with the series dynamic. And the origin of the name, I was trying to track down the origins of this Chappie name. It's a French derivation of Chapin. And it means clergyman, you know. <laughs> yes, so it's kind of one of these interesting. Uh, <clears throat> our new, our new religion of transhumanism and AI, and <clears throat> yep. So we're doing the Shiva dance, whether you like it or not. Uh, they're tearing down the old, and they are creating the new, and right. uh, uh, that is what is going on. Chappie is the new, the evolved. Uh, new consciousness and whatever man will uh, evolve. Directed, remember, directed evolution means evolution with a gun to your head. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, there is no evolution unless these guys force it. You know, and that's what they're doing. They're forcing this stuff by all their violating all the moral codes of humanity to make this happen. Yep. Now, will the word in the Bible? Uh, the mark of the beast uh, is force, so it will be forced uh, upon uh, people that have not accepted Jesus Christ. They, the mark of the beast, will be forced. And you know, when we were talking about consciousness, and I know we're working on something for later uh, with the tree of life and the worm and the, you know, the consciousness and everything like that, with a pine cone being the top of the uh, caduceus of Osiris. But uh, in the Garden of Eden, you, you still, in, in the uh, correct translation, there are two trees in the garden. You know, one of them is a tree of consciousness, and when Adam and Eve uh, took from that DNA tree uh, from Samael in the garden, uh, they took on that consciousness. They, get, they, they fed into whatever he wanted them to believe, and that is the same exact thing that is going to happen uh, with these end times with people that are going to marvel after this uh, computer and want to plug in and evolve to a certain little level of consciousness. Um, that's that's the same exact thing. Agreed. Yep. The other tree is the tree of immortality. They were forced out of the garden and out of paradise and um, 
And that tree uh, does represent Jesus Christ, and he is the only gate to heaven. And so, um, you know, it's like, you know, when people do, we've talked before about the uh, seven chakras and the chanting uh, with the spirit. Um, there's only one Holy Spirit, and that comes from the seed of the heart, from the love of God. And, um, and so you, you just can't mix, uh, mix all of these things with God and His Holy Spirit <clears throat> because they're completely different. Uh, from from these things and the trick of, of Satan into the world. That's why uh, the Lord tells us don't be conformed to the patterns of the world. And when we see all the celebrities flipping up these all these signs, those are the patterns of the world. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the music that they play, uh, Round Saturn's Eye has found very old uh, voodoo dancing and cutting the chickens and doing all the black magic and everything. And that music is the exact same uh, thing as a lot of the uh, the entertainment industry and celebrities. They make this music based on a lot of those voodoo dances. Will be the exact same moves, and he'll show like both uh, videos. And I'm like, wow, that is very interesting. That they're they're tuning into that frequency with your consciousness and going on to that rhythm like the beehive and the the frequency. Uh, but, um, you know, that's why Jesus told us not to be conformed to these things and not to believe man and not to uh, be connected to, to these things in the world, but to know him and to know him by his word. And, you know, we know him. All, all three of us know the Lord, and that's how we came together, just like you said earlier, Anthony. And that's why we're here is to, you know, Show what's going on in the world and research things and, and try to understand uh, these end times and, and what's going on because we're all a part of this world right now until the Lord comes. And uh, CERN is a big beast machine. That machine is a very uh, dangerous machine and, it, and people need to understand uh, what that machine is and what the quantum computer is and uh, how it's going to change the future. It's very important because it, this it's going to change the future, and 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 most people don't aren't aware of that. They're not aware of how close it is that they're doing these these changes and the things that they're going to be doing. I just I just want to just add a quick little thing with uh, since we've been talking about the helix and the triple helix and the winding and the <clears throat> godhood and immortality. Uh, a, the pop culture reference, and I'm climbing the stairway to heaven, uh, which is one of the most famous ones, makes me think that uh, their evolution into godhood is climbing the triple helix to godhood. Uh, just my adding on to your discussion there. Just uh, that's what crossed my mind. Yeah, exactly, Jacob's ladder. It's interesting. Um, there was another conversation I was having with some people this week, and one of the uh, one of the the points was that so few people, when asked, "Do you know about CERN? Have you ever heard of the Large Hadron Collider?" and the comment was from this person who was asking multiple people this question. Many people had never heard of it. Certainly, they had heard of the God particle, but when you ask specifically, have you ever heard of the Large Hadron Collider? The eyes just glaze over. So there's been a significant cover-up that's been going on in the form of distraction, in the form of movies and television shows. Nobody's talking about this in that popular culture venue. They're keeping it out of the movies. You don't see any movies mm -hmm. on, on that other than Angels and Demons that came out with Tom Hanks back in, I think, 2008 or something. Well, I will tell you then why I watch these movies, and these movies are yeah. horrible because Hollywood does, it, they're horrible at story writing. They're about propaganda and feeding the beast. Uh, but um, the I, Frankenstein movie, for those who want to watch a movie that is about releasing the demonic from the portal into the thousands and thousands and thousands of, of, of uh, bodies that have been prepared 
for the demons to possess and then take over the earth. Uh, the I Frankenstein is this exact topic that we're talking about. A really? soulless, a soulless creation. You can find this on Netflix if you want to, but um, it is exactly the conversation here. Uh, the 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 good the good versus evil is the the good is is uh, the it's more of a Catholic spinoff, but it has the um, what do they call those stone the the gargoyles are the good guys mm. instead of saying angels, <laughs> uh, but they have a connection to heaven, which is. Whatever, but the, the demons are funding the scientists to reanimate life, and then when the scientists sure. reanimate life, they do away with the scientists. They don't need them anymore. That's right. And, and the point is, they release out of this humongous pit this demonic flow of the opening the pit of these demons coming up to fill these tens of thousands of corpses that they have just sitting there dangling, waiting to be filled by these spirits. This is the CERN hmm. portal Saturn connection okay. right in the movie I, Frankenstein. So now I, let, me, let, me, let me stop you there for a second. I, I want the audience to understand I purposefully keep myself disconnected from all of this stuff. Yes, I went to see Interstellar and you know a few of the other movies, um, Imitation Game, but I haven't owned a television in four years. I don't watch television. I don't watch movies on Netflix. Very selectively will I look at a movie. Now this I Frankenstein I had no clue about. I'm going to go look at that for obvious reasons. But the reason that I have somewhat created this monk-like in you know existence for myself, yes I have a regular job and do all those normal things, but is so that I don't pollute what I believe the Holy Spirit is trying to guide me towards in terms of re research and going down rabbit holes and writing the books that I write. I don't want this infusion of this other stuff to get in there and, and lead me astray. I want to stay on the path, the straight and narrow that he's got me on. So then when you tell me about a movie like I Frankenstein, it just blows my mind because it's right there. I'm not a prophet. I keep telling you guys that stuff, but I'm just trying to reinforce the fact that I'm not pumping myself up or putting myself up on a pedestal. I'm simply saying this blows my mind because then I see the things that popular culture is putting out that reinforce and reconfirm to me that I'm on the right track. Yeah, and I, you know, when before I got onto this path, I sold all my DVDs, movies, and I was stop. I had stopped watching movies and TV. But the Lord said that to me that if you want to understand the enemy, you enter their camp and do recon. And so my mission's always been recon. It's not because they uh, produce anything worth watching. It's because that was my mission, which is different than Anthony's. Right. Yeah, I um, I agree, Anthony. My kids asked me why I don't watch TV, and I said, well, that's mind trash. That's just mind trash. But uh, I don't want to pollute my mind either, and um, I, I went many years without watching it. Um, I... I, uh, my family would watch movies, and I, w I always say, no, I don't want to watch that. And so they know me. They know I don't want to watch any movies. They can go in the other room. I wish we didn't have TVs at all mm -hmm. in our house. If it was up to me, uh, there wouldn't be uh, any. Um, I'm not uh, worried about watching certain things to learn from, like Tim, and I pray, and I know that God protects my mind, but... Um, mm -hmm. It has a purpose for all of us, and uh, but we do get distracted. And the big picture is is that, that with Project Paperclip and and all these things through uh, the Germans and all of this stuff through uh, the technology they have, you know, they can put a person right in front of you and they can disappear, and they you will, they will look very well real. And they do have that technology right now. Um, they can, you can not even have a TV and have it holographically put in your house. You know, that's the technology that they have. But, um, and but the this, 
the TVs are being used to make everybody be asleep, just as in the Wizard of Oz where they're all in the poppy field falling asleep. Mm -hmm. That is what TV is for, and TV right. is to keep us in a daze. Yep. And you need to remember that. It is a Saturn box. If you look at the square object in front of you shooting an image out, it is the Saturn cube shooting it into you, your Oculus. Yep. You yep. are receiving the programming from Saturn. And it's if you look at Saturn and the planet and the portal, the um, tunnel through the middle between the cube to the Oculus, you see exactly. And also when they flip screens on you, that is the spirit traveling through the box and being refracted onto your eye. So it's almost like the travel of the spirit through the box into you. So it's a, a very bizarre refract you because cameras work that way. They shoot an image and refract, and your eye also works the same way. It shoots an image upside down and refracts back to the flips, you know. Uh, so they obviously are showing you how you're programmed. And but then if, if you're if you're Jonathan Kleck, you re <laughs> you refract again. <laughs> he turns everything upside down and he, he's shown us some crazy stuff, which is right there. He's right. Yep. They, he can also, they can also put images that go across your screen so fast that you won't even see them and they go in, inside of um, your consciousness. Yeah, if we didn't have TVs, everybody would snap out of it and they couldn't do this garbage. <laughs> They couldn't take over. They none of them could take over. But uh, we're in a daze. We're linked in. We got our cell phones that we're looking at. We're texting. Everybody looks down now. They don't look at the sky. They look down at their hand, and they look at the TV. So they try to get you to go from one stupid Katy Perry uh, ceremony to the next Madonna ceremony to the next Jay Z ceremony, and and keep your brain just you know. I'll never forget about three years ago, I was walking with a friend and I said, have you ever heard of chemtrails? And she said, no. What, what are they? I said, look straight up. <laughs> and there was a perfect pattern that day. And she said, I don't understand. What do, you, what do you mean? What are we looking at? Aren't those clouds? And of course, I had to go into the explanation. But you're exactly right. Everybody's looking down. And even if they do look up at the sky, they don't even know what they're looking at. Yeah, people forget. I, I, I was talking to kids the other day. I said, when's the last time you saw a dragonfly? When's the last time you saw a butterfly? When's the last time you heard a cricket? When, when's the last time you heard a frog? When's the la And I just keep going down the list. All these things are died off. You know, They're very limited. Yep and you barely ever see them. I grew up with dragonflies all over me growing up and butterflies all over me and uh, you know they're killing off everything that carries pollen around you know and it, it's like <laughs> it's uh, they have destroyed the atmosphere and they have these clouds are not even real and when you look at these clouds they're wispy little thin things they're not like the full old style clouds you know Chris, go ahead. <laughs> Tim is just, he cracks me up. Uh, you know, I think, <laughs> was he like a flower? No, I'm just kidding. But uh, he, 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 he makes me laugh even when he doesn't try to. So. Oh, I know. I know. I make everybody laugh or cry, one of the two. It's either one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, the the chemtrails, I think that there are some lawsuits that have been filed and uh, people are starting to wake up and be aware of those things and come together and, uh, you know, just like with Monsanto, they were so powerful in the government that no one could beat them, but uh, Hawaii changed their laws and uh, they're not allowed to put GMOs, or they say they're not, into their food. And uh, so most people are waking up to uh, GMOs and what they are, and uh, they're poisoning, poisoning us. There are so many people that are coming up with autoimmune diseases and uh, being ill and not understanding why and all the stress mm -hmm. that, I mean, our world normally was not like this before. We, we weren't stressed out. People were uh, enjoying uh, their family and, 
you know, get-togethers, and not that we do now, but it's just, it's different. There's a lot of, there's like a stress barrier there that wasn't there before, and I think most people, most people realize that um, the closer we get, but the more people research, they'll realize the truth and the big picture of who's running things here, and, uh, and what they're doing, and, and how they want to, they want to depopulate us, just like the Georgia Godzone says, uh, we're not important to them, and uh, they don't care. You know, there was a question posed to me a couple of days ago, and that related back to CERN, and whether or not the machine is even in the Bible and its activities and the goals and the opening of a portal. So maybe I'm kind of throwing that at you without any preparation, but I, my sense of it is it doesn't have to be in the Bible. It's here, and it's part of their agenda. And whether or not it's successful in terms of opening the portal and the spirits coming through or not um, doesn't have to be in the Bible as far as I'm concerned. I'm on a path right now of researching to see if it is, if it is cryptically or symbolically represented. So I kind of toss it to you guys to do some research as well. Especially Chris, I mean you in the ancient studies, you would be able to answer that better than I could. Tim, I'm sure you are more familiar with scripture than I am in the modern times. So I throw it to you guys, but I don't think it should discourage us from the path of paying attention to CERN understanding what their purposes are, and yes, the machine is fragile, and they may not be successful in doing any of these things, and none of it may happen this year. But I think that we've connected enough dots to be able to say it does fit with the Bible in terms of the end-time activities, um, the opening of the pit in the Bible, certainly I think is CERN. Well, I, I don't have a problem with having to prove that CERN is named in the Bible. I see that <clears throat> I see that the watchers knew that their destruction was coming. I see that they're being told in the book of Enoch that uh, their judgment coming down on your kids and on you. And uh, you can tell through the megalithic structures built around the globe that they were trying to prevent the wrath of God from being able to wipe them off the map. Uh, even in the construction of the Tower of Babel, uh, the Dr. Lake's book on the Shinar, um, uh, what's it called, the Shinar uh, Directive or something, uh, he discusses how the uh, Tower of Babel is built to be above the, the flood level that occurred in the days of Noah, uh, knowing that God might try to wipe them out again for what they're mm -hmm. trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so the point is, they knew judgment's coming, and they were preparing for it. Uh, these people are involved with opening these portals. At, um, to a certain degree, I don't know, you know, the Luciferians, of course, are demon-possessed. Those guys are demon-possessed. Uh, the Rothschild-level guys that have been backing this and funding this and putting all the resources, these are demon-possessed uh, uh family lines, you know, uh, that are part of this movement. So, so I, I don't really have a problem with CERN problem itself. With CERN itself. Yeah, well, um, it's, it's an interesting uh, machine for sure, and there's a lot of watchers out there that have many blogs on, uh, you know, what the Shiva dancer means, and maybe to the New Agers that's happy, and you know, we're going to have a new world to come. And I know the Jews have their uh, reserve telephone that's for the new world to come, uh, like we talked in our show yesterday. But, um, but you know, CERN is a big deal, and it's it is uh, powering up. Um, this month, and we do have the black sat cloth sun this month, and the pure home holiday that we just had, and or they, the Jews did, and um, and so it's just interesting. I was just, I was, I'm getting an echo back. 
Can you hear that I'm getting an echo? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what happened. I don't there. know what happened there. But... Hmm. Let me just see. Let me just see. Let, let me just uh, turn off my audio. I'll point out something. I'll point out something. The 20th? The 20th? Of March is Friday when March we normally Friday do, our we show. do our shows. And that's the eclipse. And that's the eclipse. I think we need to do a special I think we need show. to do a special show. Okay. Is there isn't there uh, some type of energy that can knock out some of the systems from that? Well we could can have coronal well, we could mass have coronal injections. mass injections. Okay. I'm getting a lot of feedback. I'm getting a lot of feedback too. I'm not. I don't have any headphones. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Do you have a page you, open by accident? Do you have a page open by accident of the show playing along? Of as the show we're playing we're along as we're. Make sure you close your pages. Make sure you close your pages. Is that better? Know. I don't know. Yep. Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. That's okay. That was your robot page, Tim. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. No, I'm still getting feedback. No, I'm still getting myself. feedback myself. Well, maybe we should just. Well, maybe we should just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just call it yeah, a let's show just call for it today. A show for Today. And for some and reason, we get the feedback. We, we don't want to torture the people. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you guys have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.